Hey, everyone. I'm Mel Robinson, and I'd like to welcome you to Happiness is Your Own Damn Fault. And what we're talking about is how to drop the baggage, increase your frequency, and live a bliss-filled life. Now, I decided to put this summit together because I want you to know that happiness is equally available to everyone, no matter the circumstances that you've endured. So no matter what you've been through, you can choose happiness now. Happiness is your birthright. It is your natural state of being underneath all the baggage you've been dragging around with you for all those years. So what I wanted to do was interview people who are truly happy and get them to share with you their secrets on how they let go of the past, stopped worrying about the future, and started living their bliss. Today, I'm excited to welcome Karen Gless. Dr. Karen Gless, PhD, has over 20 years' experience in a successful psychotherapy practice as a licensed marriage and family therapist. She believes that happiness is our birthright, and a major source of happiness for many people is a loving, supportive relationship. When she works with couples, she always asks herself, how can I help this couple grow and realize the potential of their unique relationship? She sees relationships as a natural crucible for growth, transformation, and creativity. She has helped many couples understand their relationship in new ways so they can resolve their conflicts, appreciate each other, and grow together. She is also a registered nurse and uses her special training and expertise in helping couples and individuals with sexual problems. She has written many articles on relationships, appeared on TV shows, given internet interviews, and has even been quoted in Cosmopolitan magazine. Welcome, Karen. Well, hello, Mel, and I'm so happy to be here with you. This is a fabulous topic. It's so um, pertinent today. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Happiness is something we really need to pay attention to. <sighs> Absolutely. It's such an honor to have you here. Thank, Thank you for you. being willing to participate. Yeah, I'm even taking that nice deep breath that takes me into that space. Mm. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Ah. So Karen, tell us how you came about came about doing the work that you're doing in the world today. Oh, that's a really good question. Um well, I started off as a, a registered nurse, and I love working with people. And I worked a lot on myself throughout the years, and that tends to lead people into seeing if they can share the same thing with other people. And I found that counseling was one of the things that really get my juices going. It's it's such an intimate um situation where you really are connected to people and you're really connected on a deeper level than how we communicate mostly in in society. Uh, People tend to communicate on a much more superficial level and um, I've gotten used to um, in my in working with couples and individuals just really working on a very deep level. So it's almost addicting. (laughs) I've had to really work at making my relationships really that intimate as well so that I don't get addicted or or not addicted, but but that I don't get dependent, you know, because Mm -hmm. it's such a – it's like when I'm working with couples, when things are going well, it's like – a special vibration that is happening and it's melodic it's it's a beautiful song when they first come mm-hmm. in it's like all crackly and then right. when things go well it's like this gorgeous song and it's just it's just amazing so Aww. that's why I want to talk about relationships because I see that they're so important in our lives so yeah Awesome. So what do you see as the keys to happiness as it relates to relationships? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to be talking about some research too. And unfortunately, that tends to relate more to hetero couples than it does to same-sex couples. But I see that the skills and the ideas of what makes for a happy relationship 
relates to both same sex as well as hetero couples. So to me, the key to happiness isn't so much falling in love as it's being able to live together and work things out together. You know, remember, when you first get together, you're in love, your hormones are overflowing, you're feeling in love and happy, (laughs) everything is wonderful, and it feels like it's going to stay that way forever. You're just on this high, and (laughs) you're just floating, wonderful. But then comes living together. <laughs> uh-huh. Things and then reality change. sets in. Yeah, reality <laughs> sets in. Things change over time. And now you're having to figure out how to cope with each other's differences. So uh, what I see is that it's always been true that every relationship is unique, dynamic, and creative. But this generally has not been noticed because of what I call the true love ideal. We have to get beyond the true love ideal. What is the true love ideal? Well, okay, so actually true love is a static model of a relationship. A lot of people don't see it that way, but when uh, in true love you meet the person, they're, they're, they're perfect, you're perfect for them, they're perfect for you, and then that's the end. Now you live together. Happily ever after. In the true love model, it assumes that all relationships are the same. And true, the, with the true love model, it's, it's, it's just, you know, in the past, the, the example I give is that the man was uh, in the house and he was dealing, uh, the man of the house, and he was dealing with the world because he was the one that went out to work. And then she stayed at home, took care of the children, and any of the social aspects of the relationship. So as you can see, the true love model depends on stereotypical gender roles. Even though the world has changed, we still buy into that model. You Absolutely. Know? And I mean we I mean I think we get so stuck because we we incarnate in either a female or a male body in gender roles and physicality doesn't mean that we're completely feminine or completely masculine dominated inside because we're we're a balance of both polarities inside mm-hmm. of our bodies and it's mm-hmm. like some have different feminine qualities and some have more masculine qualities like my wife and I we have a really cool balance of things where she's more masculine in some areas where I'm feminine and mm-hmm. I have more masculine qualities in some areas where she has more feminine qualities she likes to take care of the house I'm the one that likes to put things together and do that kind of stuff you know but exactly Exactly, and interesting. Yeah, and exactly, and and interesting. Hetero couples are the are the same. They just don't always know that. Right. It's, it's so, really they're, interesting. They're limited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, mm-hmm. so so the thing is, is that nowadays most couples are working outside the home. That includes couples with children, and since most couples both work out of the home, both have to deal with the outside world. Both have to deal with the social aspects of life together. And that Mm -hmm. means you have to work things out together. So, like you were talking about, um, you know, making choices about who does what, when you get beyond the true love model, you you talk about that sort of thing. And so what I'm I'm calling getting beyond the true love model is I'm I'm calling it for right now the new relationship. I, Mm. I I haven't been able to really hammer down... A, another name for it just yet, but in the in the new relationship because it goes it it goes beyond the true love model because it's evolving and dynamic. Yeah, so we, we you know you change over time. When you first fall in love, you start the process of then living together. You you're living, mm. and um, so what I so one of the things I want to do is talk about the guidelines for happiness in the new relationship. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I see each individual is unique and each relationship is unique. And you were talking about it in such a, 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 a dynamic way that I, I just love it. But um, how we're, we're more than who we think we are. We're not just a role. So in the new relationship, it's really creative because there's, there's no real map of how you live your life together. It's, it's, you're going beyond the true love model, and that changes 
everything about relationships, from the way you choose a partner, especially from the way you choose a partner, but also how you live and grow. It's like the example I give of when you choose a partner in the true love model, it's like I told this one couple, you can't have half a baby. I'm sorry. It <laughs> can't be right. done. It's, you know, they, they, they were sitting in front of me, and one of them 100% wanted children, and the other one 100% did not. And it's like, sure, they should have figured this out ahead of time, but with the true love model, why do you need to discuss such details when you're meant to be together? Have you known couples like that? It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> So when you're seeing the relationship through the true love model, um, and, and through that colored lens, it keeps you stuck in really unrealistic expectations of yourself and each other. Under- right. You know? Understanding yeah, a new relationship is both liberating and challenging, though. Yes. Yeah. It's a delicate balance because yeah. in some areas you both could have, like, the feminine aspect and kind of almost bicker over who's going to do what part of that, you know what I mean, instead of having the, the opposing so you have a balance, some things you're, you're both dominant in, so you have to find a balance in that energy. Yeah, you just get stuck in that stuff because you believe in that ideal, you know. Um, it's, 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 it's really interesting. So what are some of the challenges that couples are facing in the new relationship model? Okay, so one of the challenges is handling conflict in a new way. The, the latest research shows that women have skills for handling and resolving conflicts that men generally lack. They generally don't have those. In fact, two-thirds of men fight to win, while 90% of women know how to work things through in an argument or dispute. That's huge. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge difference. Okay, since two-thirds of men have little or no ability to work through conflict, they fight to win because that's what they've been taught their entire lives. So what I have noticed in my practice is that when one partner tries to win almost all the conflicts, what happens with the couple is that they either break up or they really live in misery. That's Mm -hmm. not the recipe for happiness. So sometimes... (laughs) bad so sometimes the couple who tries to win um or the partner who tries to win really gets it and learns how to work things through but this only happens spontaneously about 10 percent of the time so mm. mostly it's uh through, through experience that these individuals get it's patience on the partner's side and it takes learning how to do things differently so you know, what we talked about, for instance, in the new relationship, um, rigid general roles are just fast disappearing. There's no question about that. There's, it's not just one partner automatically designated to do the dishes or vacuuming the house or making the money. That's just changing. So, so what I see is there are fundamental relationship skills that couples need so they can make decisions together and, and, and work together because that's what has to happen is they need to be able to learn how to work together and not just both of them get into a, a disagreement and try to try to win. So, so what, what yeah. are some of the skills they need? Okay, so that's how I see my role as a counselor. So I ask myself when this couple sitting in front of me, um, what is it? that keeps this couple from working things through on their own? Is it a lack of skills? That's one. Or is it something beyond their capacity to cope? And, you know, far too many couples are coping with things like depression, uh, substance abuse, or personality disorders, and things like that. And Mm -hmm. so that's kind of part of my role as as a counselor, is trying to differentiate what are the skills uh what is is it skills or is it some something else and right. and and so now what i'm seeing also besides because a long time ago it was just like oh depression substance abuse first of all, now i'm looking and seeing that in hell couples at least um men are trying to win and women are giving secret support so now i ask is this couple stuck in the true love model 
mm-hmm. and 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 with its rigid role expectations. And so, you know, I ask couples to think about this: when you have a disagreement with your partner, what are your expectations? You know, so that's what you've got to look at. So, so I'm, I'm getting to the skills, honest. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> The, but part of when we're looking, when we're dealing with expectations, is that your partner should just know, right? Yeah, exactly. Mind read. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They should just know what I want, when I want, how I want it, and and so that's an indicator of being stuck in the true love model because everything's supposed to run smoothly. And and when it doesn't, you feel like, and I've heard this so many times, you feel like, well, there's something wrong with this relationship. Because we think to ourselves, this must not be the person for me. Wait right. a minute. Wait a minute. You know, I, I, I understand that couples get into conflict. And, and when one person constantly tries to win arguments, over the years, a couple can descend and both of them trying to win. And, and I see that in, um, with two people in front of me because um, I can see when they're stuck because um, I, I try to make it safe for them to uh, um, talk to each other and, and get beyond that. But, but what I see is they start, start getting to a place of, um, um, no, I know what's right. You, you, what are you talking about? I know what's going on. You're, you're supposed to listen to me. And I'm going, ooh, we're, there's some skills here that are needed. <laughs> mm. there's, there's some, there's, we're stuck in the true love model and we're, we're lacking skills. So, because um, I see them descending into both of them trying to win now. So I know they're both stuck. And And, and so one of the things is, I try to make it safe for them, but also I try to help them understand that to have a happy relationship, they have to do what I call a skill, a, a specific skill is work on their love bank account. Hmm. So a, a, a happy relationship needs you to tend it like you do all living things flowers absolutely plants, yeah pets you need to feed and nurture it some people pay are attention nicer to, them. to their huh pay attention to them give yeah. them your attention yeah absolutely yeah, have, yeah a, a relationship with them yeah yeah some <laughs> people are nicer to their pets than their than they are their partner i hate to say uh huh yeah ah. absolutely yeah so one of the I love that you call it a love bank account yeah so one of the I have my self love bank account too, so I love that you used it as a bank account. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's so I call it a love bank account and, and it, it it could mean going on a date once a week, appreciating each other's positive efforts. Um because basically the love bank account is the goodwill we maintain, the nice things we do for each other. So yeah. it means um you know, finding out what's special. Um, for our 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 partner and um um going with them doing those things being will, willing to step out of your comfort zone sometimes yeah yeah and try new things and try new things yeah because that's how i see is that the other person counts you know just like we count so so we have a partnership we we're needing to to work together on things mhm yeah um, yeah, so that's one of them. The next is to have good fights. Have you ever heard anybody use that as a phrase? <laughs> no. Good Tell fight. me more about it. Have a good fight. That, to find a good fight. That's incongruent, isn't it? <laughs> a good well, we're going to have them, so I like the idea, actually, because, I mean, they're necessary. You're going to have conflict, so you're you're going to have argument, which that's how you grow and change. You need the struggle in order to shift things. So I like that it's have good fights. Right, 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 yeah. Well, so a good fight means that the way you have a conflict 
is that it deepens your relationship instead of harming it. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it brings you closer together versus tearing you apart. Precisely. Mhm. Precisely. Yeah. So instead of getting more and more upset, it means you start finding something with what your partner is saying that you can agree with. Mhm. Instead of trying to See, what I see couples doing is they get into this place of of saying, you have to hear me. They're trying to prove their point. Right. My point counts more than your point counts. I know the way it is. They're not talking with each other. They're talking at each other. Yeah. So they both end up defensive. And defensive is a way of escalating the conflict. As soon as you start getting defensive, you're escalating. You're going in the wrong direction. That's when things, that's the beginning of things getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. And um, I hate to say it, but sometimes that's happening when people are um, um relaxing together and having maybe a little bit of wine and then things get on hand. So sometimes I talk about being aware of uh, alcohol and not bringing that into the relationship um, Mm -hmm. because that makes for unhappy relationships as well. So happiness is getting control over um, all kinds of addictions, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to talk about relaxing and things like that, stuff you know about and have worked with as an important way of um, both maintaining happiness as well as getting away from old bad habits. So so, so one thing in um, fighting a good fight is to be at your best so that you can really get where your partner is coming from. You know, so that you're not Mm -hmm. stuck in um, trying to win. And sometimes if you're just stuck in trying to win, you need to take a break. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I have to sometimes just step back, and it's really helpful to remember that, like, this is the person that I chose to spend the rest of my life with and is my best friend. Yeah. Like, I want to be connected to this person. I don't want to be fighting and have this animosity with this person. I want to be able to communicate with the love of my life, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. We forget that cause we, because we have to make decisions together, so we end up on opposite ends. But it, it's an important thing. It's a very important thing to remember that um, that's why the love bank account is so important. It's mm-hmm. easier to remember that we're friends when the love bank account's in good shape. If the love yeah. bank account starts getting in deficit mode, it's much harder to remember that we're friends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So work on the love bank account, have good fights. What are some other fundamental skills we need? Okay. So one of the pieces that I'm really beginning to get excited about is the idea of the new relationship and how we're our partner is a mirror of us and so if we get away from the true love ideal and thinking about um things are supposed to go smoothly my partner's supposed to understand me if it's not well, I just need to move on. Rather than understanding, I really need to work at learning how to work things through. I need to learn how to appreciate our differences. Mm -hmm. I need to see that my partner is maybe a mirror for me to go deeper and realize that the conflict itself is a chance for personal and mutual growth. So it's mm-hmm. a different way of looking at conflict. 
Yeah, absolutely. I love the mirror. I love the mirror analogy because it's like, mm-hmm. it's like if I can, when I look at my arguments in that sense, it's always like, okay, this really has nothing to do with my wife. This is, I'm bringing this up. This is coming up inside of me. So I need to figure out why I'm upset inside and it has nothing to do with the other person. It always is my stuff. Precisely. Precisely. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, it's not, see, the thing is, is it's not, Exactly that. Um, you have to be perfect, and then get you into can. a relationship. It's 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 on the job training. It's 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 growing through time together. It's learning to become one together. Yeah, come into union together. I mean, yeah. that's what marriage is all about. It's it's yeah. the whole. It's like as above, so below. Before we became human, we were one with Creator, so we're just redoing that on the planet. We're two people trying to become one together. I mean, that's you're supposed to be getting closer every day, not further apart. Right, but it's going to be bumpy because yeah. that's, that's the – life is for growth. So mm-hmm. it's going to be bumpy, and and that's why I really love the whole idea of the mirror because um, – that's how else can you get to know yourself except through somebody else you that's can. why i like it like looking at it as you don't have to be perfect in order to get into a relationship you grow through the relationship you deepen through the relationship that's why i call the new relationship as being uh dynamic and mm-hmm. and um and 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 growth produced and, and evolving. It's not that static true love concept. It's more yeah. than that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um so that's one piece too is just really um seeing the relationship differently and some of the skills are being able to um, self-soothe. Mm-hmm. Being able That's to, important. Yeah, being able to calm yourself so that you can hear the other person. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Take time to come up with a different point of to view, different point of view, and a really big one really is um, finding something to agree with that your partner is saying. That really lessens, that really de-escalates the conflict, makes you both happier, and um, allows you to really get the other person's point of view. Because when you see, when you say, "Okay, what I hear you saying is," in a way, you say that, um, or you, or you go, "Well, okay, what, what, what you're." saying I can agree with is, you know, da-da-da, the person feels heard, mm-hmm. and that helps us relax and right. feel cared about, you know, and loved and, and listened to. Oh, it's a big deal to get listened to. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, so. In therapy, what I call this is is uh, paying attention to process. Mm, pay attention um, to process. Yeah, it's 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 um, instead of just looking at the subject that you're working with, being aware of the way in which you're dealing with each other. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So so if I'm being snotty, if I'm being defensive, if I'm I'm being uh, difficult, uh, rather than trying to work with my partner. Uh, it's useful for me to be aware of what it is that I am doing rather than just get all caught up in the subject. Mm -hmm. It's paying attention to process is a much more fluid, uh, much more um, grounded um, way of doing things rather than just subject put you in your head. So that's sort of a another way of talking a, a bit about mindfulness actually. Mhm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
So the fundamental skills, working on the love bank account, have good fights, the mirror, self-soothe, and the pay attention to process. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Karen, we are actually getting close to the end of our time together. Okay. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about the free gift that you're going to be offering everyone. Excellent. Well, um, I have a free MP3 on mindfulness. And um, and I also have a um, booklet that um, I would like people to have that talks about the skills uh, that I talked about today. And, oh, um, and the the MP3 on mindfulness helps to relax and and get into that space that allows you to see things from a different point of view. Hmm. And once you can shift your point of view, everything will change. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, after our talk together, do you have any final words or parting words of wisdom you want to share with our audience? Well, I just want to tell them that instead of just expecting things to to work the way they're supposed to work, realize that you need to you know, do your homework in a way. You need to take the time to learn how to work with each other, how to get on the same page, how to line up your goals and 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 develop skills of patience and acceptance of yourself and each other. And 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 those um skills will make a big difference in um how happy you are in your relationship. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everyone. I just want to remind you that happiness, it's an inside job, and it's equally available to every single one of you. We're living in a time where we can choose to drop whatever baggage we've been carrying around. We can drop the old stories. It just starts with a choice. You are powerful beyond measure. And all you need to do is tap into the divine power that created you and follow the guidance you're given. You were born to be happy, experience joy, and live an abundant, blissed out, and spacious life. I want to hear from you, so hit reply to this email and share your thoughts with me. Karen, what an honor it was to have you here. Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. I hope that worked out well. I 